All right. Good afternoon. My name is Alex Squadrito from Kentucky State University, and today I'll be talking about intensive pond production of paddlefish in Kentucky. Uh, to set the stage for this project, we're going to take a brief look at current trends in freshwater aquaculture production here in the United States. As most of us already know, domestic aquaculture has been in decline over the past few years. You can see between 1979 and 2003, production increased on average 31% annually, from around 45,000 metric tons to 342,000 metric tons. Yet from 2003 to 2009, production dropped 20% to around 277,000 metric tons. The major player in domestic freshwater aquaculture production is the channel catfish, Itdolores punctatus. Catfish production is the largest U.S. aquaculture crop below 180 million kilograms. Catfish production is in the United States. Uh, currently, there are 60,000 hectares in monoculture production of channel catfish. However, surface acreage has been in decline for the past few years. The decreasing trend in production can be indicated by the lower numbers of catfish being sold to domestic processors. From 2003 to 2011, domestic production had dropped a staggering 50% from 300 million kilograms to around 150 million kilograms. As of a February 13, 2013 report, domestic farmers had sold 136 million kilograms of catfish in 2012, which is the lowest value produced by the United States since 1989. Coupled with this decrease in production is an increase in foreign imports of tra and basa catfish from Asian countries such as Vietnam. Here we see a graph illustrating the exponential increase of foreign imports of catfish from 2003, where imports, import weights were estimated at 2.2 million kilograms, valued slightly under 7 million US dollars, until 2010, when we saw a 2,800% increase to 62 million kilograms for a total value of approximately 200 million US dollars. To combat this decline in domestic aquaculture to foreign competition, we need to think outside of the box for opportunities with other species. What we feel is one of the best alternatives for catfish for freshwater aquaculture production is paddlefish, or as they're locally known, spoonbill catfish. The paddlefish <coughs> exhibits numerous characteristics that make it possible for sustainable aquaculture production. First, they are native to the United States. We're able to breed paddlefish in captivity. They are fast growing obtaining a marketable size and favorable conditions in about 18 months. They filter feed on naturally occurring pond zooplankton. They have a mild boneless meat and females are able to produce caviar at around the age of seven. What we wanted to do is to be able to grow these fish to the point where they would yield two 85 to 140 gram or three to five ounce fillets. From survey data collected from restaurants, we know the prime fillet cut chefs want is around 115 grams, where they may serve one fillet for lunch or use two fillets with a dinner platter. As you can see, we would need to raise the fish to right above the 850 gram mark to obtain two 115 gram fillets. Survey results did show that some chefs liked working with different sizes of fillets and would accept whole fish as small as 650 grams. Here we see an example of the cuts of the paddlefish. An 850 gram fish that has been whole dressed will retain 80% of its live weight. A bulleted or loin cut will retain 50%, which can then be cut into medallions. Fillets with skin are approximately 30% live weight, and without the skin are 25%, which will yield two 110 gram fillets. The objective of this experiment was to determine the intensive production levels that we would obtain from a 400 meter, uh, square meter pond and what per percent yield of our harvest would be marketable at a 650 gram size. We have found this experiment to be very exciting since this was the first time that we had tried intensive pond production of paddlefish in Kentucky. The fish were stocked at 14,820 fish per hectare, or roughly 6,000 fish an acre. We stocked eight 400 square meter ponds using phase two paddlefish of approximately 210 grams in size. Phase two paddlefish are second year fish that have been feed trained during phase one. The fish were fed a 32% protein floating catfish pellet at 3% body weight once per day in the morning. 
The pond was aerated from around 4 p.m. until 8 a.m. the following day using a half horsepower surface aerolator, which when scaled up would be approximately nine kilowatts per hectare. The experiment was conducted for 180 days from April 2011 until October 2011. Total feed used in this experiment totaled 20 metric tons per hectare, or roughly 17,550 pounds per acre. In October, the fish were harvested using seine nets and transported to the hatchery where they were measured and weighed. Our data showed that 7% of our total population was larger than one kilogram, producing two fillets larger than 140 grams. An additional 13% were above the 850 gram prime fillet size, which would be able to satiate a sizable market. And finally, 20% ranged from the 650 gram to 849 gram mark that chefs indicated as their smallest acceptable whole dress size. So in total, approximately 40% of our harvest was able to be marketed. By the time we analyzed our data, we found some alarming numbers with regards to our fish's feed conversion ratio. This number is obtained by dividing the amount of diet in kilograms put into the system by the total mass gain of the fish population in kilograms. Properly maintained federal catfish farms have consistently put out feed conversion ratios of roughly two and a half to one. This means for every two and a half kilograms of diet added to the pond, one could expect a one kilogram mass gain. During our study, our feed conversion ratio was twice as high at 5 to 1. This is extremely important since you don't want to put more diet into the system than you need to because first and foremost, it is an, un an unnecessary expense. And secondly, excess feed can quickly deteriorate pond water quality. At the conclusion of this experiment, after we had discovered the high feed conversion ratios, we performed a feed floating test. We placed 100 pellets into eight separate buckets filled with 15 liters of water for 24 hours. Diet companies typically guarantee 90%, 95% floating rate, meaning that 95% of the pellets put into the pond will float for an extended period of time, sometimes up to 24 hours. Within the first two minutes of the feed being placed in the buckets, approximately 50% had sank. By the end of the 24 hours, we found that 90% of the diet had sank. Unfortunately, there are no feed mills in Kentucky and we must rely on out-of-state sources that can't always guarantee quality. The reason this is a problem in paddlefish farming is that they are filter feeding ram ventilators. They are able to be feed trained with floating pellets but must obtain them <coughs> at or near the surface while the diet is in suspension. If the pellet drops out of suspension to the pond bottom, the fish are unable to obtain it. With more than 50% of our diet sinking within the first few minutes of our study, we concluded that with the fish getting only about half of the diet, that they would therefore put on less weight, driving up our feed conversion ratio. We obtained a new feed after our experiment, which when tested passed with flying colors, and this was a good way to let us know to check every batch of feed that comes in with a float test. With this better feed, we hope to drive down our feed conversion ratios and see an increase in the marketable percentage of our harvests, hopefully up to 60 or 70 percent, from the 40% that we saw at the conclusion of our experiment. Here are the calculated economics assuming production in a two hectare or a five acre pond. Total production assuming 90% survival would be around 16,600 kilograms in 180 days. Initial costs are primarily composed of the phase one fish at $45,000 and the diet which sells for roughly $600 per metric ton. Labor and electricity costs are roughly $1,500 each, with an additional $3,000 to be used for other costs, such as netting, chemicals, baskets, etc., bringing a total cost of approximately $79,000. At this price, the break-even cost for paddlefish production is $4.75 per kilogram, or $2.15 per pound, meaning that if you sold all your fish at this price, you would make a $0 profit. However, paddlefish are currently being marketed as a high-class boneless fish with tender mild meat and can currently fetch $7.90 per kilogram or $3.59 a pound. At those market prices, a farmer could expect a $131,000 gain and after removing initial costs, comes out with about $52,000 profit. If a farmer decided to stock additional paddlefish at lower densities, and hold them until the females begin to produce caviar at around, at around the age of seven, then even larger profits may be obtained. Thank you very much.